Hello beautiful people. Tonight I want to talk about uh, organs, your organs and the emotions that are related to your organs and your glandular system and the emotions related to each gland. I also want to talk about how each gland behaves in its respective area to create what's called the chakra. And so each chakra has its own light. We won't talk about the color of the light as I don't feel it's important. I just want to talk about more what each uh, gland does and what all your organs are doing in their respective areas and how this emotionally affects your body. To start with, I want to tell you the three books that I base this talk around, okay? One of them is called The Body Clock in Traditional Chinese Medicine. It's a little book. It's about 110 pages. And the other two books are written by this amazing psychologist, Anadoath Juda. I don't really know how to pronounce her name. One's called Wheels of Life, and the other one's called Western Body, uh, Eastern Body, Western Mind. Okay, so to start with, uh, in ch traditional Chinese medicine, your organs are usually paired together to form an element, okay? And in that element, there's a yang and there's a yin organ. So a yang organ is, a, is an organ with a lot of tissue, almost solid. So let's say a yang organ would be your lungs, your heart, your liver, your kidneys. Okay? A yin organ is a hollow organ, like your gallbladder, like your uh, large intestine, small intestine, uh, and so on, and your bladder. Okay? So each organ, each element has at least two organs a yin and a yang organ. And each group of organs represents an element in traditional Chinese medicine. So I'm going to read this, so bear with me a second, okay? So there's the wood element, the earth element, the water element, the fire element, and the metal element, okay? Metal is the equivalent to air, and that's why there's no um, air element. The, the wood element is the liver gallbladder. So the liver is the yang organ, the gallbladder is the yin organ. In the earth, uh, in earth, you have the spleen and the stomach. A lot of people think they don't need their spleen, but the spleen is actually a lymphatic organ. And if you know anything about the lymphatic system, all lymphoid tissue helps you clean and detox the body. A lot of lymphoid organs, once they're congested, the doctors will tell you, well, you know, we have to remove it. But the lymphoid organ itself is not the problem. The problem is your body's too congested and that lymphoid organ is working way too much. So the breasts have a lot of lymph nodes and could easily get congested. And this is how breast cancer comes along. Your tonsils are, is a lymphoid organ uh, or lymphoid organs. And when they're congestion, congested, you might have to remove them. And the spleen and the appendix as well. Okay, But they by themselves are not the problem. If you clean your body and let them detox, you probably won't have to get rid of these lymphoid organs. Okay, So water element. Water element is very obvious. It's the kidneys and the bladder. The fire element is the heart and the small intestine. And the metal element, like I mentioned, it's the air element, it's the lungs, and it's your large intestine. One breathes in and breathes out, the other one breathes out, all right? Now, each element and each group of organs also corresponds to an emotion, okay? So the liver and the gallbladder correspond to anger. This is why someone that drinks, they might already have a congested liver and they might already have some anger issues. When they drink, they will actually uh, become even angrier, okay? The earth element, the, the emotion is worry. And as I mentioned, the earth element is stomach and spleen. Sometimes when you're worried, you have this gut feeling that's like bubbling a little bit, okay? This could also play into your uh, sixth sense, if you will, that when your gut is a bit disturbed, it's trying to tell you something. 
So this worry is sort of a good thing that's trying to warn you against something. Okay? The water element is fear. And this one's very obvious, okay? The minute I scare you, you'll have the sensation that you might have to go pee. And that's because your body's getting ready to uh, fight or flee, and your bladder's kind of just giving out. It doesn't do that all the time, but it does that uh, quite often to make a statement about it. The fire element, this is a good one, okay? The, the emotion is joy. This is why we like hugging people. When we say we love someone, we point to our heart. Valentine's Day cards, we give like uh, uh, cards with hearts on it, etc., etc. The the metal element is the lungs and large intestine, and this is associated with grief. And that's why, in fact, when you're sad or you're worried, uh, when you're sad and you have grief, you tend to breathe like this. It's kind of a way to uh, let go of some of the tension in your body through exhaling this way, okay? So I just want to cover the emotions a little bit, okay? Uh, on, off the topic. So anger is a bit of an active emotion. It's kind of negative and kind of positive. It's positive because it makes you, uh, it gives you a bit of like, of play in the game you're not a victim okay when you're angry but sometimes you're you're angry because even though you're not playing the role of a victim you're angry because you're kind of stuck in that situation anyways right so your boss removes one of your shifts uh, your boyfriend girlfriend leaves you or it's not going well with your boyfriend girlfriend etc and so like you get angry yeah but your anger is just a more active version of grief, worry, and fear. And this is how like all the elements kind of come together. An interesting note. So as I've mentioned, my dad passed away this year. And my dad was someone that really pushed down his emotions. He pushed them down to such a point that like he got cancer in, in his colon. And he would actually say it after they removed the colon. He says, you don't know how many emotions I've swallowed. He goes, you don't know how many emotions that were locked inside me. And ironically, when they removed his colon, the first thing that happened is he got pneumonia. So all the acid, all the congestions, all the emotions that were in the colon needed somewhere to go and they directly attacked his lungs. And so imagine these two organs go together. They're the metal element. So his air element, his grief element, uh, was, was so overburdened that the minute the colon was removed, it had to go somewhere. So it went there. Metal and water kind of play together. So the minute his lungs were overly congested, then his kidneys were overworking and with the overworking of the kidneys at that stage in his uh, cancer they actually had to put him on a dialysis machine and we thought he was going to continue on a dialysis machine till he passed away but luckily it lasted a few weeks and his kidneys recovered so all these emotions go with your elements and go with what's going on in your body right now why am I telling you this? So I'm telling you this because you can actually fix some of your emotions just by eating better. And so by eating better and you have more alkalinity in your body, so by eating fruits and vegetables and more foods adapted for your species, you can actually feel better, feel more joyous emotion, get rid of some of the grief, some of the worry, some of the anger, etc. Uh, a lot of things that irritate the body create negative emotions. So example, if I'm having too much coffee or dark teas, too much meat, not saying no meat, but too much meat, too much animal products, this will irritate my colon. And then also what happens is the liver has to process it and cleans it up, clean it up. So this irritates the liver. 
So this creates kind of like a, an anxiety in the body where the liver is overworked. And then, not to mention, it's going to overwork and tax a lot of the other organs. And this is why, I've, as I've mentioned in other videos, it's important to clean the bowels so that the kidneys, the liver, and all the other organs could clean themselves out uh, accordingly. So if you guys are more interested in this stuff, you could just go online and research five elements. You'll get some charts, you'll have the elements, what uh, emotion corresponds to it, and what organs correspond with uh, those elements. So the next thing I want to talk about is chakras. In Western culture, chakras come across as this very mystical, uh, unattainable thing, right? It's like there's a light and you close your eyes and the lights vibrate and uh, you're, you're enlightened and blah, 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 and whatever. And all these things might go together, maybe. Uh, but I want to explain chakras in a way that's more basic, more understandable to the Western mind, and more help, helpful for you right now, this second, okay? So there is seven chakras. And what a chakra is, is the way a gland corresponds in its respective uh, area, okay? So, the first chakra, which is technically the root chakra, is actually not really the first chakra, okay? So, the first chakra is related to survival, and survival is related to the adrenal glands. But the adrenal glands are actually on top of the kidneys. And so, actually, if you would feel it out physically... Your first chakra is your ovaries or your testes. But in the, if you want Maslow's hierarchy of needs or in the chakra system's hierarchy of needs, they put the adrenal glands uh, as a more basic necessity than uh, the gonads or the testicles and the ovaries. Okay, Why? Because survival is more important than sexuality. And this is a fact. If you don't think so, uh, prove me wrong. So, example. Uh, I'm afraid. I need to run. I need to fight. Or I need to flee. Okay? My body tenses up. All the blood moves through the muscles. And it's the adrenal glands providing uh, this to happen. Okay? When I'm training really, really hard, it's the adrenal glands that are super uh, pumped up and ready to, ready to go. Okay? This is cool. If it's like a momentary state so I I experience this just like a few moments per week where I get chased by something I'm like trying to uh, dodge a car or whatever I think one of the main problems is when in fact you have this feeling all the time and so once you have this feeling all the time what happens is the adrenals actually start producing too much acid and this ramps you up longer than you should. My teacher used to use the example of a squirrel. If you notice a squirrel, it gets chased by a cat or by a dog and then moments later, he's happy. He's playing with his squirrel friends. You're having a good time. Everybody's like just chilling out. He's good. So the emotion didn't get to him. So, in fact, the adrenal glands calm down the secretion of hormones and they moved on to other things, okay? Uh, so, it's, it's actually very important that you analyze your state on a day-to-day -day basis. Are you always ramped up? If you're always ramped up, it means your adrenal glands are working too hard and they're getting tired. So, you want to take caution to eat foods that don't irritate them. So, not too much overly stimulating foods. Not too much coffee, especially afternoon, after uh, lunchtime. Not too much green tea. Not too much bread. Not too much anything irritating is not good for the adrenal glands. Okay. The next chakra, if you will, is the ovaries and the testes. So first you worry about survival and then comes sexuality. I think one of the main problems, especially in our times is that survival gets overlapped with sexuality. So you notice more and more women going into porno. By the way, I am not for or against porno. I just, just a personal view that I've had. 
is that in fact more and more women going into porno and more and more women over sexualizing themselves is actually a sign of economic failure on our end the two countries that i've seen that are overly that the women are really overly sexualized was thailand and brazil and both these two nations have extreme economic issues so i feel that not all women because there is women that just love porn and that's great but i feel a lot of women end up in porn to survive so that they could have money buy things they like feel accomplished in some ways so this is what i mean by sometimes the the idea of survival overlaps with sexuality even for a guy let's say you're in times of war your testicles actually produce more sperm because your body feels that there's this urgency to procreate because you might not be around very much longer so survival and sexuality overlap each other and sometimes the mind and the body confuse them and that's why there's a lot of like um we have this strange relationship with sexuality as human beings so what i'm saying is to heal these chakras or to heal these areas you have to feel like you're in a safe place tell yourself in a safe you're in a safe place if you're in front of a computer watching this there's a really good chance you're in a safe place your life isn't that bad and then you have to ask yourself if you're using your sexuality as something to express yourself and that makes you feel beautiful or something that's like urgent and you're not going to eat unless you have it and another thing that makes like us have that kind of sex is if you're with the wrong person let's say you married a partner just because they have money or you married a partner because they make you feel like safe because they have resources etc etc so already we talked about the adrenal glands and the ovaries or the testes so these are the first two chakras if you will the next chakra is in the solar plexus and here is like there's the the pancreas so the pancreas is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland okay if i didn't explain before what the difference between endocrine and exocrine is is very simple okay endocrine means that the hormones are secreted inside the body so like the pituitary gland the pineal gland the testes etc they all secrete the hormones inside the body okay exocrine glands like salivary glands and sweat glands excrete the crins or the hormones or the secretions outside the body and so that's the difference between endocrine and exocrine okay so the pancreas is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland okay and so the pancreas is at the pelvis area this area is about rooting and asserting yourself in the world so this idea that we want a certain amount of likes on facebook or on uh, or, or on whatever social media this wanting to be appreciated at work this wanting to like uh, create a musical or artistic project this is us trying to assert ourselves in the world okay and this too could get a little bit confused with the first two chakras right because the thing that asserts you will also probably be the thing that makes you money and probably also be the thing that maybe gets you a partner of your desires and so sometimes it's good to separate each individual chakra in order to put them back together and make them stronger so what is it that you are trying to assert in the world okay there's this beautiful saying by zig ziglar it says in order to climb the ladder of success you have to point it at the right building and which is to say you have to point the ladder at, of success at a building that makes you the most comfortable so what is it that you want to assert in your life and in your body the next chakra is the thymus and how it responds to its responding area which is the lungs and the heart we mentioned before that when you feel grief your lungs get heavy and you're like <sighs> yeah when you also feel grief you also maybe feel like you're not loved you're not anchored in the world uh nobody cares about you etc etc so like you want to ask yourself how can i receive this love am i giving love to receive love do do i feel that you know by expressing my love 
I can have more love, or etc. Just ask yourself really basic questions and see if this area is is hurting. You can also know sometimes if you give a hug and you're very distant and you give like kind of a far hug, maybe you're not comfortable exploring this area. I've also noticed it and it's just an observation, I'm not judging. Like women that have really, really big breast implants, again, not all of them, but some of them are using them kind of as a block to their heart. They're aesthetically beautiful, but it's also a defense system from penetrating their heart. So they have this beautiful aesthetic breasts covering their emotional scars. And again, it's just uh, an outlook. I'm not saying every woman is like that. So try and heal and find your love. The next chakra is in the throat area. And here there's two glands. There's the thyroid and the parathyroid. And this is a, these are very important glands because they regulate calcium uh, uptake and uh, absorption they basically regulate calcium absorption in your body okay so if you notice somebody with osteopenia osteoporosis any th problem with their bones what happens here is that th there, there's a problem with their thyroid or parathyroid it's also an area where you want to express yourself vocally to the world so you have something to say I had a friend that she would always be blocked here it would always hurt and she wouldn't be able to communicate and when she started communicated when she started communicating more this area actually released a bit and relaxed and she felt more comfortable in general in her body so ask yourself what truth are you holding back what truth are you swallowing down that needs to be expressed also on off the record on off the subject if you will uh, if your intestine is uh, encrassé, if, if it's like dirty and you need to clean it, there's a very good chance that the toxins from your transverse colon is going to come up and intoxicate your thyroid and parathyroid. I've asked many women who have thyroid problems, they are also very, very constipated. Usually one goes with the other. So if you're someone that has a lot of issues with your thyroid and parathyroid, ask yourself if maybe your issues are actually with your uh, intestine, which this will go along with the other chakras as well, okay? The next chakra, everyone's heard about it. It's like the most talked about chakra in terms of chakra. It's the pineal gland. And so the pineal gland assists with sleep because it produces melatonin. So the pineal gland produces melatonin when you're off the bed and serotonin when you wake up. If you're not producing the right amount of melatonin to sleep, you're also not producing the right amount of serotonin when you get up. So both hormones kind of shaft you if they're not in balance. So you need to be producing the right amount of melatonin so that you will get enough rest and relaxation and you need to be producing enough amount of serotonin so you could move about your day, be happy, and do things that are exciting in your life. Also, if your colon is congested, the acid from your colon will move up and will hit the pineal gland. Also, the pineal gland is a means to visualize, okay? It's a, it's a means to dream. The pineal gland helps you to uh, form dreams when you're sleeping. It also helps you to form ideas when you close your eyes and you're thinking of something or you're imagining something, okay? So it's very useful. And then the last chakra, which is related to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is said to be the master gland. The reason it's called pituitary is because it's the size of a pea, but it's the master gland. It controls all other glands. Now they say as you get older, you start to lose your imagination and creativity. This doesn't have to be the case. The reason you might start to lose your imagination and creativity is because you're not resting enough, you're not f feeling good in your body, and your body's producing that acid. So anything that's moving upward will kill these upper chakras, okay? There's actually a zone in the eye that's at the uppermost part of the eye that as you get older, you see that it really starts to deteriorate. 
and this area deteriorating is actually your brain starting to deteriorate from the acid that's coming from your colon into your head. This last chakra, which is the pituitary gland, relates to transcendence. So once you've balanced your survival, your sexuality, your anchoring, rooting yourself in the world, you're finding love, you're being able to communicate, you're being able to imagine the kind of world that you want for yourself, then obviously you have to share that with the people around you. So this is your transcendence. So they all go together. What I ask from you is that if any emotions come up with any organ or gland that I have mentioned tonight, just sit down with it and ask yourself, okay, how can I emotionally make my life better? What do I need to express in my day-to-day -day life to make my life better? And uh, that's it. If you guys have any questions, you can write me or message me. If you want to leave a small donation, you could send it to dragonflowyoga at gmail.com or you could simply like and share this video. Na-ma-ste.